I'm in Tigray, the northernmost state of Ethiopia. Most of it is semi-arid highlands, located between two and three thousand meters above sea level. It's a beautiful land, but it's also a harsh land, with only two to three months of rain per year. I have come here to document a story that seems almost like a miracle. The farmlands of Tigray were degraded by deforestation and overgrazing. Over the course of the last hundred years, topsoils were eroded and the groundwater tables have sunk deeper and deeper. During the driest months of the year, Tigray looks almost like a desert in many places. Consecutive wars and conflicts had made matters worse. During the drought years of 1984 and 85, nearly one million people starved to death in Ethiopia. The memories of these years are deeply engraved in the faces of the older people in Tigray. Those years have also led to the widespread perception of Ethiopia as Africa's primary hunger nation. But things are changing. Eroded land is now turning green again and springs that have been dry for decades are starting to flow again. Mikele, a friendly university town and the capital of Tigray. I'm visiting the regional office of GIZ, one of the implementing agencies of German Development Cooperation. On behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, GIZ supports the Ethiopian authorities in the upscaling of sustainable land management practices. Since most of the households in the rural areas are using this uh, firewoods for energy as energy sources, uh, you know the deforestation rate is very high. Also, together with this unwise and, and improper management of the livestock, which is mainly you know open grazing system, which destroys all the vegetation, which could you know soak the rain and then dissipate into the ground, and then uh, with this deforestation and overgrazing. The land areas are becoming bare from time to time, so the rain which is coming is just flooding out of the region because there is no, you know, um, item or uh, or plant materials which absorb the rain and then let it infiltrate into the ground. So all the runoff, all the rain is just washed out as runoff. So these two factors are, you know, highly aggravating the land degradation in the farmlands. In the village of Abrahatsbra, the situation seemed like a dead end. The villagers were chronically dependent on food aid. Mehar Gebremdin of the Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture remembers just how bad it was. Hi. There are a lot of spots will be have good exemplars in watershed management. But in Narvatwa, there is a, a difference from others. In Narvatwa, uh, the rainfall is uh, low, it is silted, it is sandy, and it is dry, so there is no vegetation covers uh, around that. I'm on my way to Abra Hatsbra. In 1998, it was decided by the Ethiopian government that the people of the village were to be resettled to a different area. The land had become so barren that the government saw few other choices than to evacuate the valley. One alternative was offered to the people. If they were to agree to and strictly adhere to a new land management plan, 
carried out by their own workforce, the Ministry of Agriculture would support their restructuring of the watershed with the help of international donors. Gebre Mikhail Gidei Berhe, the long-standing chief of the village, convinced his people to agree to the rescue plan, even if it meant a huge amount of hard work. <laughs> The driving force for change for me and my community? We were totally depressed by being dependent on food aid. It was a shame. There was this policy and a strategy from the government. Following could bring a change. We were convinced and so we followed it and started to work by it aggressively. The main cause for change was that we had a problem. For how long can you be a beggar for food? Just uh, the full name is Gaurav Kalkide, uh, but his nickname is uh, Abhawi. Uh, Abhawi it says uh, just uh, fireman, uh, which is not, uh, I don't know, just it's not uh, actual meaning, but just when you start something in a sport, yet it spreads to cover the area. Okay? So, like that. So, he initiated something. Then the whole community will be moved towards of the development and to achieve or implement uh, that issue. So, just from that aspect, is, they, they call it Abhaw. Uh, he is a demonstrator, uh, or he may he make he made a demonstration. Then the people can learn from his farmlands. Then it takes to the whole area. So he starts something, then he, it covers in the whole villages. So that's why uh, his name is uh, just Abhawi. Uh, uh, anyway, he's Abhawi, just in the local name, so I say. The problems one can observe here in Ethiopia are the same as the ones in the Himalayas, in Nepal or in the Andes where I've been working for decades. You find these problems in Bolivia, in Peru, in Ecuador, in every mountainous region. And the measures that you need to take to heal these problems are always quite similar. But what really impresses me here in Ethiopia, since I work in this program, is how comprehensive these measures are being applied. This is because the government and the farmers are acting in concert. They are actually remodeling entire landscapes. The first assistance we got from the government were some practical projects here at our side. 
We were giving technical assistance by organizations like GIZ, the World Food Program, or USAID Safety Net. With their support, we tried to save our degrading hillsides. From the government, we didn't just get strategies and policies. We also got trainings on how to implement them. On top of that, three government experts were assigned to us. One for crop development, one for natural resource management and one for livestock. We gained experience and then the government provided more technical support so we could learn even more and so on and so on. That process really brought the change. By now we have almost reached food security. The people of Abrahatspa also established cello irrigation wells. Gabriel Mikael coined the term water bank for them. Just to make clear that groundwater is something like a bank account, you have to make sure something is deposited if you want to withdraw later. By now, almost every farmer has his own water bank. Simple mechanical pumps are used to irrigate the fields. This way, even in the dry months of the year, crops, fruits and vegetables can be harvested up to three times a year. During the last 10 years, agricultural productivity has risen significantly. The positive impact of sustainable land management can usually be felt very quickly. Already after five years, the benefits are so tangible that villagers adopt the new methods permanently. This has positive economical and social impacts too. The diets become richer and more diverse, surplus production can be sold on the market, and the overall material well-being and security improve greatly. Through consequent sustainable land management, the people of Abrahatspa have managed to turn their barren valley into a green spot on their satellite map. In 2012, the village was awarded the Equator Prize of the United Nations Development Program. If Gebre Mikael is the father of fire, then the changes in Abrahatspa were something like an igniting spark, because sustainable land management is now spreading in Tigray like a wildfire. The objective is to create a model site like Abrahatspa in every district so that the surrounding villages can learn from it. Step by step, food security shall be reached in the entire country. There are already over 350 model sites by now and the fire keeps spreading. <laughs>